Hi, this is 9.3 Polar Area, and we're going to do a little intro, which is not in your note packet, but I want you to get a concept for what, what's going on here. We're going to find polar areas of different shapes, uh, some of those graphs that you looked at previously, but I'm going to start with the circle to see where we're at. So if I take the area of a sector, if you remember from your geometry days, this is going to be uh, one half r squared theta. So if I can find this theta right in here, and then I can find my radius as well. So say, for instance, this is r is equal to 3. I should be able to find that area of that sector. So say, for instance, I go from pi over 6 to pi over 3. If we do that, then we know that this interior angle theta is going to be pi over 6. So if I want to find the area of this, this would be 1 half r squared. My r is 3 and my theta would be a pi over 6. That would be this interior angle in here, right? So then this would give me my value. So I get 3 over 4 pi units squared. That would be my area. Now what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into calculus. And how we turn this into calculus is that we go ahead and we're going to take this theta and we're going to shrink it down to nothing. And so we're going to take a smaller sector here and we're going to add it to a, another smaller sector here. And we're going to keep on adding in these small sectors together. And yes, we're going to get to a limiting process where that theta actually goes to zero. Because we're going to have curves that would look maybe like this instead. And so when I find the area of that, this radius is different than this radius. And so I need to account for that and we're going to use the great summing machine to add up all these areas. And so in order to do that, we're going to get areas equal to 1 half. We're going to do the summing machine, and this is going to be from pi over 6 to pi over 3. And then I'm going to keep my r squared. Now here's the problem, though, is that r is going to change based upon some sort of equation. Well, right now, my r is just 3, so that's not a big deal. And then instead of having uh, theta, because I know 1 theta, theta is going to be smaller and smaller pieces to get these small sectors going off of my graph. Okay, And so then theta is going to go to 0. And so this is the formula that you're going to need for the polar area. Now let's give it a shot and see if we get 3 over So the area is going to be 1 half, and I'm going to go from my pi over 6 to pi over 3, and I got 3 squared d theta. Antiderivative of, of 3 squared would just be 9 theta, and I still have my 1 half, and I'm going to go from pi over 6 to pi over 3. So this is going to be equal to 1 half. 3 pi minus, and then this one would be 3 pi over 2, because if I take pi over 6 and plug it in there, I'm going to get 9 pi over 6, and then if I take 1 half of this, this would be 3 pi over 2. 1 half is equal to 3 pi over 4. Wow, it works. Okay, so the calculus is working for us. And so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to figure out how we shoot these little radii out and then figure out the formula for each one of those radii and if we start at 0 and go to 2 pi or start at pi over 4 and go to 7 pi over 6 that's what we got to do so that's the intro for what we're dealing with so polar area now let's get into the lesson here's the formula one half alpha to beta are going to be your limits of integration and then we're going to have r squared d theta Okay, so then we got to figure out, uh, for instance, this one, find the area of one petal of the curve of r is equal to 3 cosine 3 theta. So this is a petal. This is, has a radius of 3, and I'm going to be going like this. I'm not going in the right order here, necessarily, but I know that these things are split up. So we're like this. So we want to find the area of one of these petals. And so I'm going to look at this area right here. 
Now there's symmetry that you can use here, but I'm going to start off by saying that, okay, my area is going to be one half. And I'm going to use this right here. Now, what is this value as compared to this value? Well, this is going to be negative pi over 6 to pi over 6. And my r squared is going to be the equation of the curve that we do have. So when I shoot out all of these little sectors that go out here, each one of them will have a different radius. Well, radii. What, what is that based on? That's based on this right here. So I'm going to take this 3 cosine 3 theta, and I'm going to go ahead and square that. And I'm going to say d theta. Okay, so that's how we get to the point that we need to be at. Now, if you wish, you can also use the symmetry because this portion of the pedal is the same as this portion of the pedal for area. So you also can write 2 times 1 half. Uh, I'm not, now I'm going 0. So I'm starting right here, and I'm going to go all the little cuts going here. And so this would be up to pi over 6. So I get the 2 right here just because I found just one piece, and I need to get both pieces. So I'm just doubling it. Now, if you punch this into your calculator, and I encourage you to try this, you should get 2.356 to three decimal places, okay? So that's what we're doing with this polar area. What we also need to do is find intersections of different graphs. So let's look at this one right here. Notice that this, is, this value is smaller than this value right here, so we're going to get a little loop in there. And so we go out to negative 3. So I know that my uh, curve is going to go out to there. And then my inner loop is going to be a value of 1. So when I do this, I'm going to get this loop here. And then this will come around a little bit like this. And then this one will come around like, kind of blew that one, something like that. Then if I do r is equal to 1, that just means that I have a circle. Radius is equal to 1. I'm going to get right there. So if I look at the points of intersection, it looks like I have three points that I'm going to be dealing with. So let's see if the algebra holds up for that. Now to find simultaneous equations, we just set them equal to each other. So I'm going to take the 1 and set it equal to 1 minus 2 cosine theta. So I'm just taking this and setting it equal to that. So then I'm going to end up with negative 2 cosine theta is equal to 0. Cosine theta is equal to 0. So cosine, I'm sorry, theta is going to be equal to pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Wait a second. I thought there were three points of intersection. I only ended up with 2. Well, what's happening is that when we create these graphs, remember that they, do, 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 they tick off and go around as we're there. And so for this blue graph, we start here, and I honestly forget the orientation, but you might go like this. And so what happens is that at this point right here, you possibly have a zero point for one graph and then a pi, pi um, angle measurement for the other graph. And so that's where we run into trouble. So first of all, what we have is, let's use these two points. So if we use r theta, it looks like it's going to be a radius of 1. And then we're going to get 1, 3 pi over 2. And then I'm going to get one more. And then it's going to be the point right here. Well, for one of them, it's going to be at pi, and for the other one, it's going to be a negative 1, 0. So in other words, I have, I'm at this angle measurement here, and then it has a value of negative 1. So the, these two don't match up. That's why it was not generated when I solved my equations. So these are the three points that you do end up with. Okay, so sometimes you have to draw a picture to find all points of intersection. Okay, then for example number three, we graph both of these. This is a circle that's centered at negative three, zero, and has a diameter of six. It's distorted because my scale here is messed up a little bit. So it should be a circle. And then in the purple here, I do have this other equation. 
Remember that if these two values are the same, then it's just going to kiss right here at the zero point. Now what we want to do is to find the area of the region common to both. So if I do that, and I don't want to shade to, uh, these things get kind of gooky, but I'm going to have, I'm, I'm going to shoot out from zero, and then the points that I'm going to have, notice that those little shootouts are going to go to the red. Now these shootouts are going to go out to the purple. So what's happening is that my curve is going to change at some point. Well, it's going to be this point of intersection. And I can continue on all the way, or I can use the symmetry of the graph about the x-axis to make it easier. Now when I get to here, I shoot out to the purple, but now I'm going to shoot out to the red for this final portion. So I'm, I'm going to be at pi over 2 up to, let me see this right here, I'm going to be at pi over 2 up to this point right here. And then I'm going to be from this point back to 3 pi over 2. So let's see how this works. So now we've got to find the points of intersection. So I set the two equations equal to each other. And I get cosine of theta is equal to negative 1 half. That's going to happen at 2 pi over 3. By my picture, that looks pretty good. That's that point right there. And then I'm also going to get 4 pi over 3. So that looks good. So I said that at the beginning when I had these first cuts, they're going to go out to the red. So I'm going to start at pi over 2 because that's going to be straight up. And so this is the tricky part here. I'm starting at pi over 2, and I'm going to go to 2 pi over 3. Well, what is my radius? My radius cut is going to go to the red. Well, the red is this one right here. So I'm going to start off by setting this up. I'm going to go from pi over 2 to 2 pi over 3, and I'm going to have this function negative 6 cosine of theta quantity squared d theta. So that just gives me that little piece right there. And then I can go ahead and find the other piece and decide if I want to go all the way around or just do the symmetry thing here in a minute. So then I'm going to go from 2 pi over 3. I'm only going to go do the symmetry thing. So now my cuts are just going to the purple. So I'm going to use my purple curve. And that goes from 2 pi over 3, which is here, up to pi over, I'm sorry, just pi. So then this would be 2 minus 2 cosine of theta. Quantity squared, because I need r squared d theta. And this only goes halfway, so I'm going to put this into my formula. I need a half, and then I need to double it. So those just will cancel each other off. So if we punch this into our calculator... We're going to get 15.708. Okay, so let's review this really quick because I did a lot here. So first of all, if I'm finding the area between the two curves, I'm going to use the symmetry. So I'm only going to find this top part and then go ahead and double it. The one-half comes from my formula. And so if I start this one, my little cuts and radii are going to shoot out to the red curve. So I'm going to start at pi over 2 and then go to 2 pi over 3. And so then my radius is going to be this quantity squared. So that's where I get this pi over 2 to 2 pi over 3. Then I go from 2 pi over 3 to pi, shooting out like that, 2 pi over 3 to pi on that other portion, and then I double them, and then I get this answer. Okay, example number 4. Uh, this drawing messed up, so... Yeah, looks funny. Okay, so if we do the next one, we're going to start with our graph like this. And so that's this one right here. And then I'm going to go up to the 6. And then I'm going to come down to the negative 2. And then when I come here, what's going to happen is that I'm going to get this loop. And when I get this loop, this is starting at a later time. And then I want to find the area between the two. So what's going to happen is that I'm going to find the area starting at, and I'm just, I can just do one of these segments, so I'm just going to do this one. I can start at pi over 2. And then I'm going to shoot out and find the big area of the outside portion. 
and then I'm going to come around and once I get past to this point, then I'm going to subtract off the area of the inside loop and it's just going to be that one portion. So then I'm going to double it and so I'm going to be able to get both sides of it too. So let's see how this one works. First of all, we want to find out when it's zero because I'm around here. So this is zero is equal to two, one plus two sine of theta. So to find the area of the, so I get seven five over six and 11 five over six, to find the area of the big loop, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start right here. Well, this is pi over two. And I'm gonna go all the way down to here, which would be my seven pi over six. Now, which portion do we have? Well, we have this one equation, so I gotta use the one equation both times. So this would be this quantity squared d theta. Okay, so that's the area of the big loop. Now, if I go into the bottom loop, I'm going to be flipping around at seven pi over six and start shooting this way. Okay, but I only need half of it to get rid of. And uh, I forgot to show you this too. This is double and then I need the one half in there. So you gotta be careful with that coefficient. But I'm gonna do this now. So then all these values are being created by shooting the other way. The radius is negative and so that's why it comes on the inside. So if I do the area of my small loop, this is going to be from 7 pi over 6, because I'm continuing on, and I'm only going to go up to 3 pi over 2, because I don't have to go up to 11 pi over 6, because I'm doubling, and I'm taking the multiplier of 1 half. And then this is the same exact formula here. You know, I'm writing it wrong. 1 plus 2 sine of theta, quantity squared d theta. So that's the area of the small loop. Okay, and then all I'm going to do is subtract those two. So when I subtract those two, oh, this is goofy, and I'm going to get, if I punch that in my calculator, I get 33.351. All right, so this one's a little bit trickier, uh, but you just got to play around with it and use this. If you have symmetry, you can use this doubling thing all the time, and then that kind of cancels out this multiplier that we have as part of our formula. All right, so that's finding area using polar. And you just got to get more experience with this and try it and dig in. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks. Have a great day.